Welcome back to Quantum Mechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we did our first example of showing whether or not two operators commute. Now let's do a just a really brief uh, review of this. And if, again, if you need more detail, go back to the previous video. Basically, if two operators commute, so in this example, we use kinetic energy operator and the momentum operator in the x direction. If these two operators commute, that means, first of all, mathematically speaking, the order of operation on the wave function does not matter. So the kinetic energy operator is this negative h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x. And the momentum operator is negative i h bar first derivative with respect to x. So what we did show in that video is that for these two operators, it does not matter the order. In one case, on the left side of the equation, we first operated with the momentum operator on the wave function, and then operated with the kinetic energy operator. On the right side of the equation, we operated first with the kinetic energy operator, and then last with the momentum operator. And when we do this, on both sides of the equal sign, we get the same result. Okay, and when you get the same result, that means that these two operators commute. And what that means more on a simplistic level is that the observables for each of these, the kinetic energy and the momentum, they can be known simultaneously. Now what we're going to see in this video is an example of two operators that do not commute. For an example, we're going to use position and we're going to use momentum in the x direction. And what we're going to see is for two operators that do not commute, uh, we're not going to get the same thing on both sides of the equal sign, and the order of operation does matter. All right. So first of all, uh, let's recall that the momentum operator in the x direction is negative i h bar times the first derivative with respect to x, and the position operator is just x. All right. So on the left side, that's what we're going to work first. We're going to first operate using the momentum operator and then second the position. All right. So, all right, let's uh, first do that. So we have negative i h bar times the first derivative with respect to x of the wave function. All right. And really to do this, uh, this kind of example, it's actually helpful just to pick a wave function. All right. We're going to pick a very simple wave function. Uh, this is going to be a wave function we'll see later on. It's e to the negative i k x. All right. The reason I'm picking this is because uh, the wave function is in terms of x. It's a function of x. So to actually put it explicitly like this makes it actually easier to determine. So basically, I would first differentiate e to the negative i k x with respect to x, and then multiply by negative i h bar. Okay, And of course, I would have an x out here. All right. If I do differentiate this wave function, e to the negative i k x with respect to x, this is differentiating an exponential, so I first just put e to the minus i k x, but then I have to use chain rule and differentiate the inside function, so negative i k x with respect to x, which would just give me a negative i k. All right, and now I can really just simplify all this because I've got just an x out in front here. So um, I can combine the i's, okay, and cancel the negative signs because there's two of them, so the whole thing's going to be positive. 2i's is going to give me i squared. I've got 1h bar. I've got 1k, 1x, and now this exponential e to the minus i k x. So when I first operate using momentum and then second the position, this is what I get. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to operate first with position and then with momentum. Now you might be able to see here pretty quickly why these do not commute. So I'm going to first operate with position. That just means multiplying x times the wave function. And again, I'm going to pick the same wave function. This is a simple one to test. Um, you can pick any wave function as long as it's a valid wave function. And we will see one that is like this very soon. And this is the easiest one to deal with, trust me. So x times e to the minus i k x. That's now operated with position. Now I'm going to operate with momentum. And now, instead of a simple chain rule, we have a chain rule with the e, but we also have product rule because now I have an x multiplied by this exponential function, which is also a function of x. I have to differentiate with the, this with respect to x. So let's do this. Let's do x times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of e to the minus i k x is just going to be 
e to the minus ikx times the derivative inside here, which is just going to be minus ik, all right? Plus, first I'll differentiate x, that's just 1, and then times a simple e to the minus ikx, all right? I'm going to put all that in brackets because I need to make sure to distribute this negative ih bar properly. All right, so why don't I go ahead and distribute the negative ih right here. So for the first one, I would just get this negative ih bar times x times negative ik e to the minus ikx. Then for the second term right here, this simple exponential, if I distribute the negative ih bar to this, I just get minus ih bar e to the minus ikx. And now I just have to simplify this right side of the equation. Essentially right here in this first term, the minus signs go away, it becomes positive. There's two i's here, so I have an i squared. Again, an h bar, a k, an x, and an e to the minus i k x. Now, this part of it is the same as what I got over here on the left side, but I still have this extra term here, minus i h bar e to the minus i k x. Okay? Now, I can promise you this. There is absolutely no way that you can simplify this right side to get what's on the left, considering the fact that these parts in red are identical. So what we can conclude here, first of all, mathematically speaking, is that you do not get the same thing on both the left and the right side. Therefore, the position operator and the momentum operator in the x direction, and really for any direction that is, do not commute because you don't get the same thing on both sides. And again, what that would mean in a simplistic point of view is that you cannot know the position and the momentum simultaneously because the corresponding... Uh, operators do not commute. And we should know that these two variables, these observables at least, cannot be known simultaneously. You cannot know position and momentum simultaneously because that's actually the definition or one definition of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay, And this example is really the mathematical proof as to uh, why you cannot know position and momentum simultaneously. Okay, So hopefully this makes sense and you can see now two examples, one in the previous and one here, to show whether or not two operators commute. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.